Today we will teach you all about tennis balls, from the earliest beginning of the production process to the result and its impact on the world. What is actually needed to produce these balls and who are involved in this? We will go beyond the label and figure out how innocent these balls really are. Let's first take a look at the production process of pressurized tennis balls. The ingredients of a tennis ball are a special blend of premium natural and synthetic rubber. These components are mixed together in a sophisticated process for many hours and kneaded over and over again. From this special compound, pellets are formed, calibrated precisely to the gram. At high pressure and a temperature of up to 160 degrees Celsius, half shells are shaped. These half shells are punched out of the mold and abraded to an exact height and then buffed. The buffed half shells are then edge cemented with heat activated adhesive. Now at high temperature, compressed air is injected into the ball core to ensure proper bounce, whilst the two shells are glued together. The next step, the balls are abraded again. They're then bathed in a special glue, the last step before the marriage with the felt. The felt is important for more spin, more control and more durability. Dog bone shaped pieces are cut out of the felt. These are then bundled together and heavily compressed. In the dipping bath, the edges are treated with a latex solution. This creates the typical white seams of a tennis ball. The felt is wrapped onto the core with ultimate precision. And for the first time, the result looks like a tennis ball. But we're not finished yet. The rubber core and the felt are bonded by applying heat and pressure. Afterwards, the balls are filled into this special steam machine, which prepares the felt for ideal playing characteristics. Followed by the next quality control to ensure the ball meets the standard that millions of players have come to expect. Well, nowadays they are all produced in China. They used to be produced uh, in the US and probably all over the world. But because of the cheap wages in China, the other companies couldn't compete with us anymore. But then again, how come that they, they are really produced cheaper in China? Uh, because of the cheap labor. Okay. And uh, how are your working conditions? Uh, Yes, the working conditions are quite horrible. Um, we are not insured by, by our employers. Uh, they don't spend any money on us. So uh, working with these dangerous machines, you could end up in a hospital and we would have to pay for it ourselves, for example. Well, that just sounds horrible altogether. And then looking at those facts, look at, looking at the things that you just told me, they're also negative, so why are you really working there? Well, um, in the production of producing tennis balls, we still uh, use very much manual labor, so we need a lot of uh, employer employees. And um, because I need the money, I have to work there. Of course, I rather prefer to work in a company with higher wages and better work conditions, but um, yeah, I don't really feel like I have a choice. So the first question, Stein, how much waste is produced each year by the production of tennis balls? Well, if you look at the waste, you have to 
first look at the amount of, uh, of productions each year. So let's say that's uh, about um, 300 uh, million tennis balls a year, so that's quite a lot. And um, with that, with the production, a lot of waste comes with it as well. So if you look at the waste pure of the tennis balls, it's about 20,000 metric tons of waste, and that because uh, it's only rubber, so it's a lot. It really is a lot. And is the waste of these factories recycled? Um, the factories or the tennis balls? Ah, uh, the factories to start off with. The factories, the way that the factories is not. That's just so weird because um, if you only look at the factories, there's so much waste going on. You know, the whole environment surrounding the factories are polluted. And now I'm not just talking about the waste, the rubber, but I'm also talking about noise and pollution and smell. And the negative stigma, there's just so much, it's really devastating. And what about the tennis balls? Are they recycled? Yeah, they, they really are recycled. We're, we're quite happy about the recycling of the tennis balls. Because, um, well, firstly they, they did not uh, recycle it. So there's been progress throughout the years. And uh, well, what they actually do is, um, they have a tennis ball. And they cut a hole in it. And they put the tennis balls um, on the bottoms of chairs. So. So that they use that, for example, in um, in schools or uh, nursing homes, for example, and that's uh, from keeping uh, scraping uh, the floors. So that's a very, I think that's very, very in a um, very smart idea. It's very creative, and um, well, for example, not only that's the only recycle solution. There's also commercial services such as uh, rebounces, for example. Oh, okay. And they also help people recycle their tennis balls. Janssen, CEO of HEAD, could you please tell me something about the sales of tennis balls? Well, thank you for having me. Well, uh, last year we as HEAD sold approximately 360 million tennis balls, which makes up about 176 million euros as revenue. Okay, could you also please tell me something about the profits that are made? Well, um, of course, everything we, uh, all the tennis balls we produce are made in China, so that makes sure that the labor costs are low and that we can uh, can obtain a maximum revenue. Rubber is needed for the production of tennis balls. Now let's take a closer look at rubber itself. There are two different kinds of rubber, natural rubber and synthetic rubber. Natural rubber comes from latex, produced by some plants and over what we call rubber trees. Since they are derived from nature, they will also over time dispose themselves. However, since the demand for rubber is much larger than the amount of rubber trees, people came up with a substitute, synthetic rubber. This rubber is not made out of natural products and therefore also doesn't dispose itself over time. Because it doesn't, factories often just dump the waste of the rubber somewhere. Synthetic rubber is under more made up of oil and to extract oil from the ground is also bad for the environment. Methane could get released into the air, which is about 20 five times as effective as CO2 and there have been quite some oil spills in the past. That's all there is to find out about tennis balls. We hope you all learned about the impact of the balls and their production and think twice about buying some. Because tennis balls do not only have an effect on your gameplay, but they also affect the environment all over the world and the lives of other people. And we hope you all agree that a fair game needs fair balls. I'd like to introduce you to Stijn van der Rest of the Tree Huggers Foundation. Introduce you to plants.